Let's pick up where we left off in episode 19 by converting our function plug to a module plug. Back in our movie controller, we have our function plug movie total that assigns the total number of movies to our connection. However, we don't need it to be set for every action in our resource. So let's update it to only be set for the index action. After plug movie total, let's add a guard clause when action in index. This will only fire this plug on the index action. Then let's open our app.html.eex and remove the line where we render the movie total. Now in our movie slash index.html.eex template, we can add our movie total like we had before. Another way we can access our movie total is with at movie total. And since we always expect our movie total to be available for this action, let's use it instead. Let's jump to our browser and ensure that we only see the movie total on our index action. And great, it's working as expected. Now let's open our movie data module and convert it into a module plug. A module plug has two functions, init and call. Init initializes a set of options. We'll just return ours to start. Call takes a plug.construct and the options returned by our init function. This is where we would modify our struct as needed. It also needs to return our connection struct. We'll use the same logic from our movie total function for now. And now that we have our module plug, let's go back to our movie controller and update it to use our new plug. First, we'll want to alias our new module. So let's change our import to an alias. Then we'll replace our function plug name with our module plug, movie data. Back in our browser, we see that our module plug is working. Our movie total is being loaded. Now let's go back to our module plug. And in the init function, we're just returning any options that are passed in. We're then ignoring them in the call function. Let's change that. Let's pass in a message as an option that will render along with our movie total. The options passed into our init function are a keyword list. So let's use keyword.fetch to return our message. Now we could use keyword.fetch bang, which will return our message or raise an exception if the key doesn't exist. Whereas keyword.fetch will return an okay tuple with our message if it exists or an error if the key doesn't exist. Let's use this and have some fun pattern matching against our success and error cases. We'll update our call function to accept our message as the second argument. Then we'll get our movie total at the top of our function. Now we can use a case statement with our message. First, we'll pattern match against our success case, which will return an OK tuple with our message. Next, we'll pattern match against our error case. Great, now if we have a message, we'll build a custom message that contains our fetch message along with our movie total. Then let's assign it to our connection as movie total message. Then in our error case, let's create a default message which will include our movie total. Again, we'll assign it to our connection as movie total message. Then let's open our movie controller and include a message as an option for our plug. With that, we can open our movie slash index.html.eex and update our message to just render at movie total message. And if we refresh our browser, we see our custom message. Now let's test our error case. We'll go back to our plug and change our init function to fetch a key that doesn't exist. Then back in our browser, we see our default message is being displayed. Perfect. That's it for this episode. Thanks for watching and happy coding.